of August, there was a special amazing event that was run in Akihabara, specifically the Mogra Akihabara, which is this, it's like an underground DJ disco kind of place that has a theme of mostly just anime and video games. And constantly throughout the week, they run all kinds of events uh, in relation to certain genres of anime or or they have like a theme like tonight's going to be all about you know Gundam or whatever and Takara Tommy along with Mogra Akibara decided to run a special event event to celebrate the 20th the 35th anniversary of Transformers and they did something called the 35th anniversary celebration Transformers fight super robotic Sonic Festival 2019 special event yeah trying uh <laughs> Try uh, saying that very quickly. And they even had, if you went to this event, you got an exclusive, an exclusive sticker that uh, abbreviated the event uh, down to uh, TFSRSF 2019. Yeah, <laughs> I guess there's one way to do that. And the sticker, what's cool about it is that it actually is the same size of mini cassettes, like G- Generation 1 mini cassettes. And you could actually put that sticker across one of your generation one mini cassettes although unfortunately it's not perforated to like you know to cut to work with a specific one so you kind of have to either you know cut it up yourself to make it work with your your laser beak or your ravage or your rumble or whatever but it's still pretty cool that that was a little bonus there and you know even like a lot of people were like oh man i should have got two of them because then i could use one and it's a cute cute little bonus and it's actually was it was an official exclusive actually um, produced by Takara Tommy in relation to this event. So that was the first cool thing about it. Now, the second cool thing about it was, so this thing started August 2nd. It was a Friday night in Japan. It started at, at 6 p.m. and it ended at 10.30 at night. And the overall theme was that it was going to be a celebration of, again, Transformers' 35th anniversary musically. And they're going to have three different DJs there, and they were going to be playing all the awesome music and stuff, and there'd be a whole concert for that, playing all the awesome music from the past. But they'd also have a whole bunch of displays because it's leading up to the masterpiece release of Lyo Convoy and kind of celebrating that of Beast Wars 2nd. So on display was, here's the whole list of it, the full run of Beast Wars 2nd, every single retail figure that was available at the time, including even rare stuff like the taco tank and uh, I say like I say like taco like taco but taco tank um, and even like the, the volcano base and, and Niagara base uh, they had the prototype for the masterpiece Lyo convoy on display in color the color version uh, they had the original Beast Wars second Lyo convoy next to it and kind of its different iterations throughout the years to show as a comparison. They had the Flash Lyo Convoy, which was the the special, like, you know, Flash repaint that was used to represent from the Beast Wars second movie. They had the Toys R Us exclusive Black Lyo Convoy repaint. We'll get a little bit into that one in a moment. And here was a really cool one. Uh, They had two Lucky Draws on display. They had the Lucky Draw Galva Lyo Convoy, which was a pretty difficult Lucky Draw repaint of him to get. And I'll get into those also. And most importantly, they had the Lucky Draw Multicolor Lyo Convoy. And this is a big deal because a lot of times we see lucky draws shown in magazines and they never really fall into the hands of collectors or anything. They usually fall into the hands of, of kids who uh, apply for these lucky draws in the lottery system. And we never get like good photo shoots or really good, you know, indications of how it looks in person in hand. And so finally we have one for really the first time for the internet to see in hand, in person from all different angles. Also on display, they had, obviously, uh, early sketches from the creation of the cartoon and the development of the original toys from Beast Wars 2nd, early sketches of uh, Masterpiece Lyo Convoy in development, as well as paraphernalia, magazines based on Beast Wars 2nd, PVC figures, all kinds of cool, really, really cool stuff on display. And, of course, uh, even, like, small little Lucky Draw Beast Wars 2nd stuff, too, on the side, magazine-exclusive stuff like Moon and everything like that. Just a, a big celebration of Transformers, but more specifically Beast Wars 2nd. And what was also cool was one of the original toy designers that not only worked on the early Beast Wars 2nd stuff, but Masterpiece Lyo Convoy, uh, Hisashi Yuki, was also there at the venue to kind of greet the fans, sign some stuff, uh, and do some interviews and everything. So I'm going to dive into some of that because there's a lot of really cool stuff. And also what I want to note, too, is I'll put in the comments of uh, this segment 
uh, they actually recorded half a, a half hour portion of uh, this whole thing live because it obviously was a it was a whole concert and everything and everything with people in the audience celebrating and cheering. So they recorded the concert live from different camera angles and everything with the DJs, and it was posted on Twitch. And even though it's already been it's past live and everything, uh, the file is still uploaded on Twitch. So I'll post the link if you want to just get a small piece of what was going on over there. And it's 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 really cool. And I wish I was there, man. Like stuff like that. It's like it makes me envious to be there in Japan when that kind of stuff goes down. So let's go into the nitty gritty and the deep details and everything. And I kind of like I, I, I found like Japanese websites and I translated stuff and there was interviews and everything. It's it's really cool. And um, another thing, too, I want to note also when you walked into the venue, they had this like gigantic, like, you know, uh, banner piece of paper where everyone could kind of like sign their name and sign in and, you know, just like, you know, maybe draw a little something. And they were greeted by, uh, to kind of keep the DJ theme, they were greeted by a G1 sound wave, a uh, music label sound wave. And this was a rare one for the Japanese, not so much rare for us, the original actual tape cassette sound wave. And what I mean by that was there was a, a paraphernalia piece that was available here in America where it was a sound wave G1 toy. I believe it came out in 1985 that uh, actually played actual legitimate tape cassettes. And while this was something that wasn't too rare or uncommon here in America, I see them all the time at, at TF cons and even in Bach cons in the past. In Japan, it was actually a lucky draw item over there, which is when you bought the two pack, and there was a two pack in Japan, you bought a two pack of Grimlock versus Soundwave. Um, it came with a like a, a voucher to apply for the lottery lucky draw for this tape cassette Soundwave. So that was like, you know, a big deal for a lot of Japanese people because over there, that was an extremely rare item to get. So that was cool for a lot of people to see that. They also had a lot of the Hero X books on, on sale for people who don't know what the Hero X books. They're all kinds of different guidebooks from Japanese Transformer culture that have been going on throughout the years. So those those were also on sale. Just Just a really cool event going on and just so much stuff for the most hardcore of the hardcore fans right in the heart of Akihabara really cool stuff so let's let's just jump into the interview specifically and um so they interviewed uh yuki and they pretty much asked him like you know certain questions and everything like that about uh you know certain characters and designs and like he went on to talk about how uh like they they were going around the room and he was pointing at certain figures that were on display and he was saying how you know like the black lio convoy was really important because it was the first time really, and it is true chronologically, it, it really was the first ever true uh, black repaint of a convoy leader, and it would go on to inspire every single other black repaint really in the future of convoys and, and Optimus Primes because that Lyo, black Lyo convoy was the first one to use not only black, but like that teal kind of blue, which we would see on black convoy, aka Scourge and Robots in Disguise, and then moving forward onto like any other version afterwards i mean we would get the likes of even before the black lyo convoy we had the likes of let's say black panther which was the the black cheetor repaint but that was like a black and yellow it wasn't a convoy repaint so this was the first real black leader repaint and using teal which would later become an inspiration for the future he'd go on to point to uh the lie uh, the galva lyo convoy the lucky draw one and he points out how like because it was so rare and not many people took photos of it, of this version. Um, not a lot of people know, but a, a fun little fun fact is that when you open up the Matrix hatch, there's a rub sign, like just like any other version, but that rub sign, if you actually rub it, it shows a Predacon logo. And he says that it was kind of like a, you know, a way to make up for the fact that he really wished that he could have made for this lucky draw. He could have made a, uh, re-sculpted the Matrix hatch on the front and get rid of the, ma the Maximal, AKA Cybertron logo, and put that of a Predacon one. He always wished that he could have gone back and done that. But again, because it was a lucky draw, it was going to be limited, not really that necessary. So that little rub sign on the inside was kind of a consolation for that. Not a lot of people know that that rub sign actually turns into that. So it's pretty cool. And it's funny because the interviewer is like, yeah, it's very uh, it's very shattered glass looking. So it's, it's nice to see that even Japanese people all the way on the other side of the planet also recognize shattered glass and stuff like that too. He would go on to the multicolor, lucky draw one and how important it was and he's just saying it's you know even for him he's like it's the first time he's seen it in person in years and he doesn't know who's the owner of this in individual one but it's just it's it's crazy to see something that literally almost 
even the most hardcore, including me, I've never seen one in person in the fandom. I've never seen one in person in any of the Bacons I've gone to at all the crazy lucky draws that show up from Bacon from Azusa's table or otherwise. So this is a big deal for even in Japan, in Akihabara, the nerd otaku central of Japan, for this to even show up, it's it's a big deal. And he said, wow, it was really cool to see it in person. Uh, he went on to talk about uh, Masterpiece Lyo Convoy and saying like, you know, when he when they were designing the original toy, it really was intended to be something designed for children to have fun with and have little gimmicks and stuff, but not so much to match really how it looks as a character model on the show. That wasn't really the original goal. But going into Masterpiece, now we're talking adult market, focusing on making something that matches the original show model and the original animation model. So they're going about that, trying to match it as, as accurately as possible. And of course, the most important thing that he wanted to do was to get that when it's in beast mode, it has that very cartoony, you know, very soulful lion face with the with the anime eyes and stuff. But when it goes to robot mode to get rid of that soul, give that more robotic kind of lion face as it sits on his shoulder. That was like the biggest goal that he had more than anything, aside from proportions, articulation, you know, no limitations on top of that and still be able to put in those little gimmicks here and there and include all of that. Um, he also mentioned that he's really excited about it because Lyo Convoy, despite what maybe international people know, um, was very, very, very successful and popular as a character in Japan. And so the fact that he's getting a masterpiece release is really, really cool to him. Not to mention he really hopes that this masterpiece will be successful to justify a black repaint because he would really like a black repaint. And he went on to mention on the topic of repaints, he mentioned how the Generation Selects uh, Turtler, a.k.a. the Seacons or Seacons, that we have coming. He's really hoping that a God Neptune repaint will come to, you know, to go along with that, to continue that Beast Wars second celebration. And I mean, it's it's it was just really cool. Like, I'm just like, I'm going to be posting a bunch of photos of these uh, in the segment, obviously. And I mean, there was just a lot of really good stuff. Like, just I mean, just looking at. Um, the playlist of all the stuff they were playing. They were playing all like the little Japanese hits. Um, I mean, I'm just going through it here. Music from Galaxy Force, from Car Robots, my favorite theme, uh, theme which is uh, the Car Robots theme, but they also played Marionette, um, which is uh, the outro. They played stuff from Prime. They played stuff from Micron Legend, a.k.a. Armada. They played, obviously, the Beast Wars 2nd stuff, a lot of Beast Wars stuff, animated stuff, like, you know, the famous animated Japanese intro, uh, Transformers Evo, you know, just so much really cool stuff. And this went on for like from 6, 6 o'clock until 1030 at night. Literally the most hardcore of hardcore Transformer fans in Japan's turn out, Japan turned out for this. And it was awesome. And I really wish I was there. It was it was really really cool so i'm gonna i'm gonna post the again the the twitch link in the description and excuse me not in the description in the comments so you guys could click and go check that out uh i'm gonna post some images of some of the cool stuff and hey if anyone got that sticker uh let me know because i'd like to get a copy of that because that's pretty cool and then maybe uh maybe we could pass on that sticker to repro labels and then maybe repro labels could make a whole bunch for us that has the perforated cuts and maybe we could put it on our laser beaks or ravage that'd be really cool but uh, otherwise, this is really awesome stuff. Ch check this out. This this is a, a small piece of Japanese culture and how they celebrate Transformers. And it really makes me wish I was there. <laughs> 